Good morning and hello and I've just realized there's not a light on there. Um, hi, <laughs> welcome to this week's live craft and chat. Uh, I'm a little frazzled this morning. It's so nice here today. It's like overcast and cold and I was just snuggled on the couch reading and lost track of time and then realized I need to make a cup of tea and you know, you guys know the drill. So I hope you can hear me, you can see me. All that kind of good stuff. Also, we don't have a Louis cam today because Louis left. So he, he came in, he sat down, he looked at me and he walked off. So if he comes back, I'll put the Louis cam back on um, and we'll see how that goes. So yeah, <laughs> it's not much I can do about that. Um, that's not the one. I've just, I just want to do a thing. I need to do a thing here. So how's everybody going? Is everybody got some good craft going? Are they having nice cool days? I'm just checking the chat here. Ecam brings in the comments in random order. I don't know why it does. So I don't know actually who was first. Let me have a look. It looks like Kathy. Kathy was first. Good morning, Kathy. How are you going? Good morning to Mel. Welcome to the chat. Working as usual. Awesome. Awesome. Um, let me have a look. Oh no, Kathy twisted her ankle last week, so I have a lot of time to crochet and knit. It's the bad and the good. I kind of get that. I, I do. I understand that because sometimes you need that forced sitting time to be like allowed to craft. Um, so I'm so glad you've got something you can do while your ankle is not awesome. But I hope it heals fast at the same time. Um... Let me know. Good morning, Vampire. Good morning, Freaky Geek. Hey, Francis. Oh, no. Angela's got to miss again. Well, Angela, I, I loved all the comments you put in last week. So, um, you know, I know it's not the same as being able to watch the live, but I'm so glad you enjoy the replays. Good morning, Leanne. Welcome to the chat. Good morning, Josephine. Tra Louis making noises out there. Um, good morning, Tracy. Hello. Um, let me have a look. Gamer Widows is in the house. Hello, Gamer Widows. Welcome to everybody showing up. I'm just trying to catch up with the chat here. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, Lizby. Um, we had such a fa like a fabulous time last week at Caffeinated Crafters. Um, and it was so much fun just to get together and hang out with humans like who craft, who talk craft, but also that we're just also humans, humaning together in the same place, I think is pretty cool. Everything Gwenny, welcome to your first time catching a live. Um, good to see you here. Hi to everybody. Hey, um, and Bub's back home. That's awesome. Molly is working while listening. That is awesome that you can do that. So I know not everybody can, you know, have a live stream on while they're at work. So I really do appreciate those of you that do that. Um, and But I, something I really need to say is I hope that you never do it knowing you're not supposed to, if that makes sense. Like I don't want to be the reason anyone gets a warning at work um, in saying that. I really do appreciate everybody, um, you know, who, who does that? It's like, I do it. Like I'll be sitting here doing other work and I'll have a live stream on in the background, but I work here where I, it's me. There's no one to boss me around. So, um, yeah, it is. It's, um, so don't forget if you are here and you do enjoy this content, don't forget to click like, if you think that there is somebody out there that you know, that would like to watch a live stream, let them know about it. Let them know about it. Because I'm going to be real frank, uh, the more people that watch, the easier it is for me to justify the hours that I put in. Um, to be honest, I actually justify the hours quite easily. I kind of like this. This is like my chance to craft every week. Um, and I've been, I've, I'll tell you what, I have been struggling so hard to not work on this project outside of the streams, honestly. I actually took it with me to Caffeinated Crafters last week. Um, did I bring my tea in? Oh, good. Um, yeah, so I took it with me um, to Caffeinated Crafters to finish off the final row so that we could get ready for our first roll. Freaky says, this is not hanging out. Yes, it is. It is. But we were, we were hanging out with in real life with coffee and dinner and stuff like that. Um, Molly says, I work from home, so there's no problem. Um yeah, so Gwenny, you found a nice place. Even um, 
Freaky does poke fun, and and it's all in good. It's all meant from a fun place. I should. Isn't it weird? We're like we warn people of it. It's like everybody, Freaky is cool. Okay, take everything Freaky says with a grain of salt, because he actually does mean it in the humorous way. If it could be taken two ways, take it the humorous way, because that's that's the intention. Um, Freaky says, I still say drag the boss into the chat. Look, I agree with you. I think, you know, make 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 the boss watch the chat. Um, now, because I was running a little bit behind this morning, I actually haven't run any of my usual checks. So fingers crossed, you know, like, but it's a dumb thing to do. You should never live stream without testing some stuff first. I basically booted up the computer, jumped into Ecamm and hit go live, um, which is kind of exactly the opposite of what I teach. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> the advantage of working with softwares you're comfortable with is sometimes you can do it. Um, alrighty. Let me. I'm like, where's... Oh, hang on a second. We might have a visitor. Oh, he's come back. He's come back. Louie's in the house. Hello, Lou Dog. How you going, little boy? I'll just get your face in there. It's like, I really need to vacuum that bit of carpet. Like, I have this one mat in this room. And I have to put a different vacuum head on for it, so I quite often miss it. Whoops. Um, so Louis in the house. Louis in the house. It was kind of weird because he normally, like while I'm getting ready, he normally beats me in here. And then today he was like, I'm not coming. I'm like, wait, what? And I actually brought him in and he walked back out again. I was like, I'm going to live stream by myself. Um, I suppose we could get straight into the, the project, right? Let's get into it. We've got... We need to do a dice roll. Um, we need to, I've just realized, I'm, tr I'm trying to be proactive because I'm like, I want an eight, so I need to make sure that the straw poll is ready. Um, you know, because if we get the eight, I need to be able to see everything. There we go, alrighty, cool, cool, cool. Excellent, all right, so let us get ready. We'll go into our other chat. Oh, I've still got a keyboard here. Whoops. Move the keyboard. Oops. And I've, something just broke. I don't know what that was. Made noises. Let's. Okay. Alrighty. We've got our project. I, I also balled up the last of the pink. It was looking very sad and it's whatever that was. So let us start with a dice roll. Ready? It's dice roll. dice roll time. Roll the dice to choose the next colour. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's, let's, let's roll the dice. Alrighty. Come on, eights. We all want an eight, right? We all want to vote on a colour, don't we? A one. <laughs> it's like... Rooster, what, what? What have I done? I did something. Louis's little webcam is mostly table. There we go. We don't want it to be mostly table. All right. Now, before I start working on the rooster colorway, which we'll get, Gamer Widows has brought out a bag specifically for us. Guys, it's for us, right? Look at this. It is with, it is with, all sorts of cool different dice on the bag and it even has a d20 as an adjust like it's a charm and not a charm it's a stitch marker you can totally take it off and on um so you need to check out gamer widows um i've put a link in the description it is an affiliate link so <coughs> etsy pay me gamer widows does not <coughs> Excuse me, I've got the biggest frog, but in mine today, I have decided to put all my dice. So I figured this one was so appropriate for my dice, but you could totally use it for your um, for your projects. But I have done it. Game Widow says it is very limited. It is very limited. So it's first in, first served on this one. So, and it's so adorable. I just, I love it. I love it a lot. It's got all my dice, plenty of room for more. I can just find the dice I want. Be like, ooh, ooh, where is that one? There we go. You know, where is, where's my, there we go. Easy. In saying that, I still haven't put these in there. 
Why? <clears throat> because I like them separate. So my da Gamer Widow's Humbug is a dice bag. Thank you, Josephine has put in the link into the chat. Thank you, Josephine. It is super limited, very limited, because it was very, it's very awkward getting those D20s. And I love mine to pieces. Thank you so much for sending it. Okay, we need number one. Oh, number one has a total yarn baby. I forgot about that. It has a total yarn baby. Like here is the ball, here is the yarn baby. Where is the end? There's the end. Louis, have you just left again? He has, he's going into Abby's room. I don't know if Abby knows, he's like, I don't know if he's allowed in there when she's not there. Fine, Louis, fine. Just walk away. We're boring. We get it. We get it. I'm not offended. It's fine. Okay, let's get started. Oops. I've got my Star Wars water mug. Water mug, tumbler that I keep water in. The reason I mention it, it was in the way. I had to move it. I had to move it. Uh, Leanne says, be quick to get the humbug. Uh, Kelly has already ordered hers. Josephine has already ordered hers. You guys are lightning. So, yes, get in quickly if you want the, the game special Gamer Widows humbug. So... Let us work. Be quick. Um, now, I will mention it again. We have uh, the contrast on this hands down shot has been dropped. These are not the colors. I mean, they, they are sort of the colors. <coughs> but the pink is so vibrant and so bright that it messes with the camera and not just this camera here but i i have six different options that i could have used and it would have taken some work to bring some of them in but i tested them all and it did not work on any of them it's just so blinding and such an amazing vibrant pink that the cameras cannot cope with it human eyes can cope with it but the cameras cannot so I have to adjust stuff to make it so that we can at least see the stitches, right? So this is this is this is the medium ground. This is the the middle ground of it's not perfect, but it works and that's sometimes good enough, right? Louis has had enough with our shenanigans. Yeah, I believe he has. I believe he has. Um he is out. He he is bounced. So that's kind of funny. Um, so it's been a week. What have you all been working on? What's your project in your hands? Lisby said seeing an IRL last week was wonderful. Yeah, it's pretty special, isn't it, Lisby? Lisby came along to Caffeinated Crafters and we had, funnily enough, no caffeine. At least I didn't have any caffeine. I did, however, have a piece of the most amazing, I don't know what it was, cake. It was, I think it was a chocolate chunk cheesecake. And it was not a huge piece, but oh my God, I don't think I would have been able to eat a huge piece because it was so rich and so delicious. Next time if I order something like that, somebody remind me I do need a coffee or a tea or something because it was just, it needed, it was very rich. Maybe I just won't order it again. Maybe that was a once off special thing. I don't know. But I'm very sad. They've removed my favorite thing from the menu. It made me very disappointed. It was a halloumi salad that you could add calamari to. It was so delicious. And it was like a mint and halloumi salad. So it had this amazing mint dressing. Gone now. Gone. Off the menu. Stupid, stupid places that, that think you want a hot meal when it's still 20 degrees. Dumb. Frances is on to her third tea cozy. Everything Gwenny is crocheting some baby blankets for the boss's babies. How many bosses and how many babies? Like, that sounds like a lot of work. Josephine is still working on her cardigan in the Peyton Sierra. Just started decreasing for the armholes. Nice. Artzog is still chugging away on a beanie that he hasn't touched since last week. Well, I'm glad you're working on it. This is one of those things, like... 
um, you know how we were talking about like our forced craft times? This is a great time for those of you, not that I want to make you feel like I'm forcing you to craft or anything, but if you feel you need that extra push, um, then um, it was, it's definitely um, an option to just choose a project that you need a bit of encouragement with. So, you know, like, like something that you, you, you know, that is just, I've got to get this done. I've got to get it finished. You know how I feel about projects like that. Those of you that haven't been here before may not know, but basically this is my, th this is my thinking. Are you ready? If you are not enjoying the project, frog it. Craft time is so, so special and so limited. Don't work with pr products you hate and don't make things you don't like. Now there's a caveat, ready for the caveat, unless you're being paid to or you've already agreed to it and you promised somebody it and then now you've got to do it. That's different. But if you are just crafting for crafting's pleasure and you're finding, meh, I don't like this yarn or meh, this pattern and this yarn do not work together, then don't, don't, torture yourself frog it donate the yarn somewhere or de-stash it if you really don't like the yarn or um if you still like the yarn but it's just not working in that project start a new project our craft time is precious uh everything Gwenny says two bosses one is having twins so three babies in total all due the end of june beginning of july wow that is crazy. That's crazy. That's a lot of baby blankets. Game Widows is plying some of Wendy's Duchess before heading back to the sewing machine. Yes, you definitely need some breaks. While I appreciate you chugging away making our amazing humbugs and project bags and all the amazing things that you make while you're getting ready for Bendigo, you still need to human and you still need to do a project that you love every now and again if you've still got time. Um... Francis agrees. Frog it. Yes, I agree. Like, I'm all for frogging projects you don't enjoy. Um, Van Fier is crocheting a simple floor rug while I battle a head cold. Oh, aren't they the worst? I had one a couple of weeks back and it was legit just a head cold. Like, it's just a head cold. Head colds suck. Your brain doesn't work properly. So you can't focus on anything. It's hard to, like, you're like, Hoo -hoo -hoo, I can't go out because I'm sick and I'll give people germs. I get to stay home and craft. I need to realize that, you know what, actually, I need a really mind-numbing project because my brain can't cope with anything more than that. And you're like, but but, but I want to work on this other thing that's more interesting. And then you screw it up and you have to undo it. But you can't undo it while you're sick because you're too sick. Your brain's too foggy to actually remember how to frog something. Game Widow says there's only five game humbugs left. Holy cow, Game Widows. That is awesome. That is awesome. So if you want a game humbug, you got to jump in. So when I'm saying game humbug, I'm talking about this guy here. I might even just leave him right here with his little D20 dangling down. There we go. Game humbugs with the, with the dice... And it's just so cute. So if you do like to game, it's a it's an awesome one because it's got it's got swords and it's got coins and it's got animal claw marks and I'm gonna say it's a stick. It's probably a wand, <laughs> arrows and skulls and it's just got lots of interest. And like I just I love it. I love it. And it was perfect for me. It was perfect. Deb D, welcome to the chat. Um. Carries down the rabbit hole. I just finished three shawls and two pullovers using my Crojo to keep my brain off Nan being in hospital. That is awesome. That is that is a great way to channel that nervous energy, isn't it? I hope your Nan's okay. Um, it's always it's always a bit scary when they start getting sick and it's they have to go to the hospital. So yeah, um, but what an awesome way to to channel that. That's awesome. Um, let me just keep going here. We're nearly through the rooster here. Because I do, I like it being able to get four of the colours in and sometimes I blather on at the start. It means we dice roll late and then it's a 
push to get the fourth color in. Um, so, you know, let's see. Oh, in case you, thank you. Thank you very much for, for dropping that link, Gamer Widows. Uh, not Gamer Widows, Kelly. Kelly's dropped Gamer Widows' link back in the chat. In case you missed it, this is the link for the Gamer Widows. Um, and see this fiberific.com.au? I'm not sure if anyone's tried to, to go there lately, but the last couple of weeks, it's been a dumpster fire. As in, it could be up, it could be down. It could take five minutes to load a page. It was driving me absolutely insane. It should be good now. Fingers crossed. I'm checking it each morning to double check. There's nothing terrifying, but it should be good now. So, um, you know, it was just, it was doing my head in. It was not good for my brain space, let me tell you. Uh, probably not a good idea that the first thing I checked every morning was to see if the website made it through the night. Um, yeah, but I was. So, and unfortunately, that meant that all of my, you know, the fiberific.com slash go to links, it meant none of those were working properly either. So, hopefully, now everything's working. If that link is not working for you, please tell me and I will go and find the very big, long, non cloaked link that with all the weird numbers, which is why I, I make them like this. Because if you guys seen those links where it's like quite a long link and it's like JK7ZP star, you know, like 14,000 things. Um, when you have like, because this is an Etsy affiliate link, when you have um, a link like that they look terrible and they're also really hard to remember to share like I can be like oh just go to fiberific.com.au forward slash go to forward slash gamer widows like that's long enough dude that's long enough um no knit spin girls when your order came through I I actually cheered I was just like oh my god <laughs> it worked for somebody because in between your order, it was crashing on my end. It kept crashing. So your order came through and then over the weekend, it was actually down. It was gone. Um, and like it was a, it was a server error. Like it is not talking to the server. Um, but I managed to get in there and do some jiggery pokery, change some stuff up, got it back up and running all very frazzling for me because website development, I built that website, right? But I built it like with like, oh, that looks pretty drop. That looks pretty drop. Like it's not like I was in there coding. I was using themes and stuff like that. And so um, so while I know, I know some stuff, I certainly don't know all the things. Um, so yeah, not awesome in that regard. Totes not awesome. Um, Pen uh, P Penel appeared just ordered through the link and it all worked thank you that's great to know thank you uh, I was amazed at how fast you filled that order oh you're very welcome I'm glad to have been able to get that out for you your timing couldn't have been better as well because I was actually heading out that day to go and do some other stuff so um, that was perfect timing on all of the above I know some orders seem to take a couple of days to go out or even a week because I only ship once a week now um, every now and again, I might go twice a week, but it's usually once a week. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was, the timing was awesome. So, oh, funny thing happened yesterday. You guys know that no, those of you that have been here a while, you, I'm a nerd. It's, it's, it's official. I, I, I should have it just wear a shirt and a badge and stuff. Nerd. Um, I'm a nerd and a geek. Uh, I'm both. And, um, oh, Um, I watched the final episode of Picard it was awesome but I realised I did something very evil without intentionally doing it so I was not watching Picard with my husband even though he is a Star Trek fan I we, we, we actually watch quite a lot of our television separately because he's in the middle of binging something else and I'm not waiting I'm sorry I'm not waiting to have all my shows ruined that are dropping week after week after week because you're binging something that's old, okay? That you could binge at any time, right? That's that's my feels like. <laughs> well, I may have ruined a storyline arc without, it was unintentional. 
because I just totally forgot that he is not up to date. He's only in season two of Picard. He hasn't even started season three, it turned out. And I'm just like, what? Like, what? <laughs> um, so I may have ruined a, a, a character um, storyline. And I, I do feel kind of horrid. But at the same time, I'm like, what the frick, dude? I've been talking about this for weeks and you have not mentioned a single time that you aren't up to date. And now you're like, oh, well, nice to know that happened. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, what? So, yeah, there, there was that. So I feel kind of mean um, about being that person. I don't, I don't like doing spoilers. I don't like being the spoiler bunny. Um, it was unintentional. Uh, it was, it's a, it's a pretty solid spoiler. Um, it kind of might ruin the entire series for him. Whoops. Um, but yeah, so I just totally forgot that he may not have watched the most recent episodes. And it's like, I suppose I should watch him. And I'm just like, ah, uh, yeah, best season of Star Trek for, for decades. Like, sorry, Discovery. Sorry, Strange New Worlds, both of which that I, I like very much. This was just home. This was different. Um, so, yeah, there was that. Oh, okay, we have finished with the rooster. We are back to the main colour. We're back onto Flamingo. Flamingo is Eye Melting Pink. It is an amazing colour. And we are nearly through the first ball. Um, we might get a couple of rows out of this last ball. I do have concerns. Um, I only have, I believe, seven. I want to say seven. Seven balls of this colorway. Um, and I'll, I'll have to do some measure -dos, um for my little chart because it may limit... Um, the length of this blanket now this is a knee rug this is never intended to be like a full-size blanket um but i did want it to be like a, a long knee rug and what's really funny about that is last night it got quite cool here right in saying that we had all the windows open okay so it was cool um so it was cool but you know it was it was we we enjoyed being cool because we've, we've had such such hot weather so even Abby and I, like Abby was walking around last night going, is it, is it cold? Are you cold? I'm cold. And like, she's in a t-shirt. I got my feet hanging out the bottom of a blanket. Like we're like, yup, isn't it nice? It's so nice being cold. Oh my God. It, it'll be novel for about five minutes. Anyway, Tim comes to sit out in the lounge room and he's got like a knee rug and he tries to steal the knee rug I've got. And I'm like, what's wrong with the two on your chair? It is like, they're too short. Look. And the thing is, he doesn't, he doesn't put his knee rug on like a knee rug. He tries to pull it up over his shoulders. Therefore, his feet hang out the bottom. And I'm just like, dude, it's a knee rug. If you want a doona, you've got to go and get a doona. And he's like, why are the knee rugs all so short? And so I just thought, wouldn't it be funny if this hot pink blanket ends up being Tim's favorite couch blanket? Um, so, yeah. I'm like, dude, go and have a shower and go to bed. If you're so cold, you need to pull the blanket up. You need warm pajamas and you need a doona. You know, like, seriously, it's a knee rug. It's supposed to go to your waist. It's supposed to cover your feet and go to your waist. Keep your, keep your knees warm, hence knee rug. Anyway, it was quite funny. Um, just laughed out loud how you use a deep voice to emulate your hubby. I do that too, even though he doesn't have a, sh a super deep voice. Look, Tim's voice can be very deep. Um, and it can be really high-pitched and squeaky and annoying. It depends on what he's doing. Um but yeah, no, he definitely, his, his, you have to let folks know you did not say all the words in a story, deep voice for the men. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I do sometimes skip words in sentences, apparently. He's back. He's back. Let's see what he can do. I'm not going to say the words out loud. There you go. Um, yeah, but no, he's he's quite funny. It it it, it was it was an interesting argument. It was because I was in the wrong, but at the same time, dude, watch the show. Like, yeah, so fun, so much fun. 
Uh, knee rugs can be very short for us gentle giants. Look, Atta, I'm sure that if if you are over five foot four, that it could be a problem. But my husband is on the shorter side of the scale. He is only two inches taller than me. So if if I can be adequately covered by said knee rug, I would assume he also could be adequately covered. I think the only person who can complain now would really be Abby because she's taller than both of us. Um, she's not that much taller. I mean, yeah, she, she, she's actually quite a bit taller than me now. Um, so, yeah, it is definitely, definitely amusing. Um, took me ages to find a good link for season three for episode four. Kept getting South Park. Really? That's frustrating. Um... Yeah, I was very, very happy with season three of Picard. I thought it was the a beautiful ending. I thought it was a beautiful ending um, to that to that era. In saying that, it also looks like a very wide open door for another series, and I am so there for it. I'm like, bring it, bring me that next series. I want it so bad. Apparently, lots of people want it. And 30,000 fans have signed a petition asking for Star Trek Legacy. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot. But when you think about the number of fans that would actually sign a petition versus the number of fans that actually want something, like that's a lot of fans signing a petition. Oh, I saw something that I'd never seen before. So you know how like we all love shows and there's shows that we love that we know that are up for a renewal and we don't know if we're going to get them back or not someone has been putting up this amazing artwork. I'll see if I can find it and share it in the fun zone for um, Gotham Knights, which is Misha Collins' current project. And it's basically Renew Gotham Knights. And it's just these, and they're full billboards up on top of buildings. And like someone is paying for professional billboard artists to do these billboards. And I think there's three or four of them have been spotted around. And it's just like, it's a massive, amazing promo for um, Gotham Knights. But it's just, and it, the, the website is Renew Gotham Knights. It's not, it's not an official thing. It's not, you know, CW being sneaky. It is some fan out there really wants this show. So I'm like, whoa, that is dedication. That's dedication and a half. Um, you know, like you guys know, I love shows. I, I craft while I watch shows. I work while I watch shows. I have shows on all the time. Um, I like background noise and I tend to put shows on rather than music. I do have music sometimes, but I do prefer um, I do prefer a show, right? So, therefore, I read entertainment news as well. Like that's the next thing. I also read entertainment news. And one of the big things is there's a pile of shows that all need renewing from CW and there's something like four slots and seven shows, right? And there's already two shows have already been guaranteed renewal. So there's actually two slots <coughs> for five shows. Those five shows are, are Winchesters, which I want, Gotham Knights, which I want, um, Texas Ranger, which I want, Texas Ranger, there's another historical version. I haven't watched any of that, but I'm sure it'd be good. So I want that too. And it's just like, but I've like had a look and I'm like, okay. It's all supernatural, guys. It was unintentional. They're just good shows. But yeah. And, but they're up against like dumb stuff. And I bet the dumb stuff wins. Like dumb stuff, like, like non-scripted dumb stuff. Um, so Yeah. Um, something's happened in the chat. I've missed it. Uh, exciting times for the Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill. They have shared the new shed building permit has been granted. Oh, that's so amazing. That's so good for them. I'm so happy. That is awesome. They will. They could really use an expansion. Um, um, Artok says, I'd love a new Star Trek show so long as it's an actual Star Trek and not a generic show with a Star Trek paint job just for brand recognition which have you felt was that because i'm actually thinking about it and i don't think i feel that way about any of the series so which i'm very curious to know which one you felt was that um 
Knitspin Girls has added, ordered a Dice Humbug. Nice job, Knitspin Girls. Um, Leanne, oh, I love this idea. I crocheted a lounge blanket with a foot pocket on the bottom for my sister years ago. She still loves it for winter. Maybe I need to do that for Tim. Hmm. So it's just extra and you sort of seamed it. Is that is that what you did? Is, is that what you mean by foot pocket? I'm just checking. I'm just checking. So, because I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. We may get another row out of this. What's left in the... What's left? Oh, yeah, maybe not. It's only just barely holding together. Look, I like DS9. DS9 was different. It was a different situation. It was a space station versus a starship. It was different. Um, I liked I liked DS9. I thought it was... I mean, I suppose I did have to get around the fact that it was different. Um, but I got over it and just enjoyed it for what it was. Um, but in saying that, I also do like Babylon 5 quite a lot as well. So... Um, it's another space station show. So I'm not against space station shows. I am pro space stations. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Um, but yeah, the foot pocket is good. Discovery. It was a good sci-fi, but it didn't feel Star Trek. It felt different, didn't it? Um, I don't think I, I look, I'll be honest. I did not like their Klingons. Like I didn't like the, um, their makeup and how the Klingons were at the start. Um, but what I will say about Discovery, and it was a very different show, is it has actually been the, it has been the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The impetus. Yes, we still love these shows. Yes, we can still fall in love with really well written Star Trek characters, which brought, if, if there was no Discovery, there'd be no, there would have been no Picard and there would have been no um strange new worlds and i love strange new worlds so much like i i rewatched discovery just so i could be ready for strange new worlds so everything gwenny says i like ds9 i like ds9 too um i thought it was a great show and babylon 5 oh my gosh i've look when i buy the discs of a show you know i like that show um so i have Babylon 5. I have all of the Star Treks, at least all of the old ones. I don't have any of the new ones. I really do need to remedy that. Um, but I have like all of the Next Generation, the original series, DS9, Enterprise and Voyager. I have all of their box sets. Um, so, yes. I actually just bought... And I probably already told you guys this, but I'm very excited. I just bought a five season box set of Warehouse 13 and it was like 50 bucks for five seasons. Five seasons? Yeah, five seasons. It was five seasons, wasn't it? Whatever. 50 bucks for all of it. I was just like, oh my God. Hello. I'll have that. Um, if anybody wants a link, let me know. I will add one into the fun zone because I was so excited. Um, uh, Holly's in the chat popping in hey Holly uh, as you said it was an extra crochet panel and then seamed it up okay so it would even it would even not matter if the colours didn't match <clears throat> is that right oh my gosh my throat is so froggy today I did not like this So froggy. <clears throat> um, I oh, just saw it on social media, Nick talking about it briefly. Oh, yeah. Um, I've liked some of the Trek stuff from Chintamani, but I've never got obsessed with it. All Star Wars. Yeah, I'm like legit obsessed. Sorry, guys. I love all sorts of stuff. But you, you guys know me. I also like Hallmark movies and I like lots of things. Um, you like all the great shows, it seems. Look, yeah, I, I think I've got good taste in TV series. I mean, that's my opinion. <laughs> um, <laughs> DS9 was great. Babylon 5 was okay. If I say anything bad about it, Vampyr gets angry and it's not a pretty sight. Go Vampyr. Like, seriously. Every time he disses on B5, you get to, like, you know, 
skip a meal that you make for him. That's 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 the punishment. That's what I'm going with. Um, Crochet Crowd had a pattern for a rug with foot pockets. Pretty sure Mikey did a tutorial a couple of years ago. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to check it out. So, yeah. So we have our bookings in for Caffeinated Crafters for the first and third Thursdays of May. All the April bookings are done. So if you guys are local and want to come along to the coffee club at the Hyperdome, you can. Um, if you haven't be been before, send me a DM just so I can make sure we, that we save you a chair. Or you could just surprise us and turn up and freak the staff out and drag chairs over and steal other people's tables. We do it all the time. It's kind of fun. Um, like, oh, you want, no, we only booked for eight, but we're going to have 15. <laughs> or I know we booked for 10, but we're going to have six. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's all good. Um, we're going to get ready for another dice roll soon. Is it just me or does it feel like we plowed through that quite quickly? No, we didn't. I just looked at the time. It just felt like it went quicker. It's about the same sort of speed. I think it's because I'm talk talking Star Trek and I love Star Trek so much. Star Trek is the bomb. Um, and yeah, I like lots of shows. Shows are good. Shows are good. What else have I been watching? I see. I also like crime shows. So I've been re-watching. Okay. This one's a guilty pleasure. Um, but I've been re-watching Castle. So I was thinking about actors that have consistently worked, right? I don't know why I was thinking about it. I was probably listening to a podcast or some such and someone commented on something and I've realised that some of the actors that I watch have consistently worked. So you've got like David Boreanaz who went from Buffy to Angel to, <clears throat> excuse me, to like Bones and then from Bones to Seal Teams. And like a lot of these shows are, like these shows are, long running series you know they haven't just done a bit part here and there they've they've gotten a you know maybe a part of a ensemble or whatever or they're a regular you know like they're not an every weeker but they're a regular so um i was i was actually eyeing off firefly i nearly watched it um i i was disappointed that Fi firefly should have totally been more than one season i don't know what the network was thinking idiots um but anyway, um, so, you know, so there's like the David Boreanatzes and, and Jensen Ackles, who went from like Days of Our Drews or whichever one of those soaps he was on over to um, bit parts here and there, then onto Supernatural for 15 years, then onto like straight into other work, like it hasn't stopped. Um, and, and Jared Padalecki, he was on Gilmore Girls and then Supernatural and now... He's on Texas Walker Ranger and, and, but I was thinking, who was I thinking of in particular? Oh, Nathan Fillion. So, you know, another one, lots of series in, and just, you know, and now he's on Rookie. So, you know, good going. I love it. Um, I also like Midsummer Murders. Vera's cool, but it just feels that little bit darker to me. And when I'm watching the murder shows, like that, especially those British murder shows, I feel like I need like that comic relief. And Midsummer Murders kind of does that, which cracks me up because I don't know if they intentionally do it, but they do it. Did I ever watch Lex? Now that was a bit... No, but I saw it come up in my recommended the other day. I was like, that is weird. Um, where is the end? I want to make sure that the end is handy when I shove it back in the thing because we need to move it out of the way. Come on, yum, baby. Oh, that's messy. All right. It's dice roll time. It's dice roll, dice roll time. Roll. roll the dice to choose the next color. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? So we've had a one. I should probably write that down. Do I have a pen? I have a pen. Okay. Ready? Two. Okay. Two is Morpho. My colours are out of order. Oh, purple's on the ground. Okay, off you go. 
Alrighty. <laughs> Leanne wants even numbers on the thumbs, please. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, Lex is on, I can't remember, maybe, I want to say Disney. I think it's on Disney now. I'll check. Um, Vera is dark. I like Midsummer's too. And it's not to say Vera's bad. It's just like when I'm watching these sorts of shows, I'm, I'm normally more looking for something lighter, like humor-wise or, you know, yeah. But I, I enjoy the characters on Vera too. They're very well written. Um, what have I done there? Let's not do that again. That was wrong. Okay. One, two, three, four. Is that correct? That feels wrong. Let me look at this. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I see what it did there. I've grabbed it the wrong spot. That's why it looked wrong. It's because it was wrong. Morpho is starting to make quite a statement. Yeah, Morpho stands out rather a lot there we go i think i fixed it let me have a little squeezy look let's pull these in there we go yes that's better that's good all right let's just go single crochets all the way across in our contrast color let's keep going um yeah, so there's actually some stuff that's being announced in YouTube if you guys want to know any YouTuber news, some live streaming news. Um, it's still odd, you guys. It's still odd. Um, it is a beautiful color, Gwenny. It is so gorgeous. And the photos on screen are probably closer to accurate than the blanket um also if you if you don't follow me over on instagram please do at fibrafic um and i've been posting although i forgot to post last week but i've been posting photos with as close accurate color as possible over on instagram because for some reason the cameras that couldn't do it as a video seem to have no problems doing it as a photo so yeah um I started reading the books that Vera is based on. She's a very different character. Yeah, look, you know what? I, I watched the Bones TV series, right? Because I really I really enjoyed that. I thought it was really amazing. Then I went and watched the uh, read the books. Like, I've read a lot of the books. And I had to really flip this switch in my brain that they weren't related. I had to go, not related, just the character names are the same. Um, and the, not even all the character names. But the books were just so different than the actual TV series that it was really hard to um, quantify that they were that it was based off the books because short of Temperance Brennan being an anthropologist, w there was no similarities. But the books were still enjoyable for what they were. They're like very formulaic. Like you read a couple of them and you're like, okay, there's a formula here. They're quite formulaic, but you know what? Sometimes I need that. Sometimes I need a bit of formulaic in my life where I'm like, when's this bit going to happen? Oh, there it is. It's kind of like those, um, the Hallmark movies, um, you know, girl meets boy, boy upsets girl. They have a fight I've, or, or they have like a misunderstanding. It's usually a misunderstanding. Uh, and then they get together. So, um, yeah. I would actually, Knits Fin Girls, I would say I think the series is better. The series is more interesting with more characters and more character development. I like that part of it. For, for um, what are we talking about? Uh, for bones the, the the tv series because you got attached to other characters as well it wasn't all about temperance the books are all about temperance not about the jeffersonian team so yeah um oh i couldn't deal with outlander i tried listening to the audiobook 
and the the reader in in the audiobook or the narrator sound like my nana <laughs> like literally it sounded like listening to my nana and then we got to some scenes and I'm like nope 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 I'm not listening to my nana read these scenes I'm out I'm out I couldn't do it um, I should probably get the books. But, I mean, I, again, I'm not a big fan of that sort of reading. Um, TVs and movies almost always leave the really nasty stuff out. Yeah, they do sometimes. Depends on the series. Um, but I also think that what's happening now is is historically, you could say it was based off a book. And the fans of that book would be relatively quiet if it wasn't that close. I think now with social media and um, and what have you, that if it's based off a book and you are taking serious liberties, there's going to be issues. And there's a good chance that unless it's a stellar series on its own without the book's fan base, it's just not going to do great. Or at least it's going to get hounded in the socials. Um the Outlander books now finish them nine. I don't know what to do with my life. I, I, I did post a meme this week about, you know, you finish in Afghan and now I don't know what to do with my life. Uh, and, and funnily enough, a friend of mine, non-crafter, suggested start a new Afghan. And I'm like, hmm, funny, because that's exactly what I did. Hello, bricks and mortar. Um, yeah, start a new series. That's what I would say. Start a new series. Although sometimes, like, depending on the books and the book series and stuff like that, sometimes you need a little bit of time to mourn. Um, so, yeah. And Natalie says the in Bones, Temperance Brennan writes books about Kathy Rock. It's kind of funny, isn't it? It's kind of funny. Um, but, yeah, it's um, I, I heard news that with the, the new Star Trek movie, the Star Trek Four, like, out of the series the Kelvin timeline for those of you that are in the know uh, with Chris Pine and all those guys, the ones that were in the cinemas the most recently, I want to say not that recent, but the most recently um, with Simon Pegg and it's great cast, but apparently they've been really struggling because there's a, there's a fourth movie deal and they've been struggling and Jonathan Frakes has put his hand up to direct it, which Jonathan Frakes has directed a lot of Star Trek television. So that could be pretty cool. I think that would be very cool. Like, let him do it. He can't do any worse than what you guys have done. Seriously. <laughs> um, and he also directed some of the episodes in Picard Season 3. So, I'm probably biased. Like, yeah, whatevs. I was going to say, considering how red my hair is right now, you guys are really not seeing how red my hair is. <laughs> um... Uh, and it, it's interesting that Carrie Greenwood has a disclaimer at the beginning of her latest Franny Fisher books, differentiating between the book workers and the TV series or the book works and the TV series. Yeah. Like, and that's the catch, isn't it? Especially if the author is still writing, um, and the series, cause the TV series is finished. So, you know, there'll be people who've watched the series who are now like, Oh, the series is over. Um, they need, Oh, the world. Okay. I see. Um, the um the series is finished, so they go off hunting for more material, and then they realise that the source material was totally different. So yeah, it's 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 one of those things. The 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 book lovers are disappointed in the series, and the series lovers are disappointed in the books. So you just have to accept that they're different, and move on, find something else, watch another series, fall in love with some different characters. Because that's what it's all about, isn't it? When you're watching series and shows and things like that, you have end up with like a, a you know, you want to see them survive and win and cheer when they do good and get angry at them when they're douches. And yeah. Or is that just me? That could be me. That could totally just be me. Like, you know, there's a word and my brain won't give it to me. It's when you, when you, uh, I don't know. I can't think of the word. I'll just crochet some. I'll just crochet some. Um, yeah, because you, you want the series to be good and you care about the series. You know it's all fictional. There's no issues with that. Just that you want it to be good and that you can... 
not so much relate to the characters. I'm trying to get to the word. My brain won't. It's like, nope. No, no word for you. You get no word. Ha ha ha. You can just look like a douche on a live stream trying to think of a word that your brain won't give you. And it's just right there at the tip of your tongue. Mm. Frustration station. Uh, you, thank you, Game Widows. That is it. Invested. Yeah. Thank you. You do. You get invested in the characters. You get invested in the storyline. Um, and, I mean, that's what the networks want. They want you to be invested. So they try to write engaging characters and they try to write story arcs that make you want to come back and watch the next episode. Um, that's their goal. But, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny. Thank you. My brain was just it was just going to, like, do me in. I was just – I was going to be a mess until I, I was going to Google it. I was literally going to end this, like, when the stream finished – I was going to Google the word just to stop my brain from trying to find it. Because that's what it does. That's what it does. Goodness me. All right. We are nearly, we are nearly on to our next row of pink. Flamingo. Louis still here. Deserted boy has not deserted me. Okay. What was I watching yesterday? I was watching something. Oh, yeah. I don't even know why I watch it because I don't, I don't actually like. I'm trying to work out if as I've grown as a human, has my taste changed? So I've been watching CSI Miami. Now, I love CSI New York and CSI Las Vegas and the original CSI that was in Vegas. But there was always something about CSI Miami that just made me roll my eyes, like really hard and I would get eye strain. Um, I'm finding it's the same. I don't know what the difference is, like different writers, different actors, whatever. Not invested at all. I'm like, yeah, whatevs. Just throw it on in the background. It's a good background noise, that one. Uh, oh, Francis is playing yarn chicken. The pattern is using more than expected. It's not looking promising. Oh, no. A series rise also. Oh, yeah, they do. They do like to stick that in there. And you know what's really frustrating is when they stick that in there and it's not needed, like there's no reason for it. Um, that always makes me a bit disappointed. And like sometimes they put it in and you're like, yeah, that is awesome. That is perfect. And other times you're like, yeah, we could have done without it for this. So, you know, it's like, meh. And then what happens? They resolve that tension and then the, then their relationship goes to smoke because the only thing that was keeping it interesting was the fact that it was unresolved. What do I do with my scissors? Oh, there they are. Like, yeah. And then the ones that don't get resolved and you're like, that was the one I wanted. That's the one I wanted. This other one is Trash Panda. I don't want that one. That one's dumb. I wanted this other one. <laughs> so, Yeah. Okay, on to the pink. Let's see if we can get a whole row out of this pink. That's on the outside, isn't it? We don't want to work from the outside if we can avoid it. Because I don't want the ball rolling around everywhere. Where is the middle? There it is. Okay. So we've got to start with our tr double crochets at the start. David Caruso's one-liners. Oh, my God. And, and it's like somebody wrote those. Somebody wrote those one-liners. And thought they were good. Okay. Like that's the thing. Right. Somebody wrote them. And thought they were good. And I swear David Caruso delivers them like. I'm laying this out here. Because the script says to. And then I'm going to look away. And you're just like. Oh my god. This is terrible. And it's kind of like a train wreck. I can't stop watching. So I am part. I think I'm part way through season two. Maybe it's season one. <laughs> feels like it's been going on a long time um but yeah it is it's definitely uh interesting um but I tend to put that on when I don't want to be sucked in does that make sense like I don't want to I've got stuff I need to get done and I don't want to get sucked into the tv show because that does happen I'll be like oh yeah I'll rewatch this thing I've seen it before and then I still get sucked in and you're just like you sit there like this 
instead of doing whatever it was you were supposed to be doing. Um, and I find that that doesn't happen <laughs> with CSI Miami. I can have it on in the background, look at it and go, yep, and keep going. Or like, oh, what's this interesting noise I heard? And look up and go, oh, yeah, cool. And then keep going. Um, oh, Vampire, thank you. She's popped in Mikey's link for, is it the foot blanket? Like the, 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 the couch throw with a foot pocket is that, that's what you popped the link in for. Uh, and it's been girl says I lost yarn chick. <laughs> Try again. I lost yarn chicken last night. Fingerless mitts. Patton said 110 yards. I had 110 meters. I shortened the cuffs considerably and still didn't have enough. Oh, harsh. That's harsh. Um, CSI New York feels like a spin-off, where CSI Miami feels like a low-res knockoff. Oh, that's it. That's it, Artag. That is it. CSI New York feels like it's a legitimate, like, spin-off. Whereas, yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly how it feels. Which is such a shame because I do have some solid actors in CSI Miami. I'm a big fan of Emily Proctor, or at least I was back in the 90s or the 2000s. She was amazing in West Wing. I loved her in West Wing. I felt she didn't get anywhere near enough scenes. She probably felt the same. Um, loved West Wing. I actually love... Like, one of the things I really like about it is how the cast still get together and do stuff together as a cast, even though that show ended so long ago. It, it kind of, it's like, I don't know, there's something about that that's special. I think that's probably one of the things I love about Supernatural as well. The show's over. These guys don't need to pretend to be friends anymore, but they still all go to the conventions together and you can see they're still having fantastic times and they just made good friendships I like that. I think that's cool. Like you'd think after 15 seasons of a show, you'd be like, yeah, okay. Bouncing now. But nope. There's just as many conve fan conventions happening now. They just had um, some conventions here in Australia. They were the... I missed them because I had stuff on and I was so disappointed. Um, Supernova. Supernova was on the Gold Coast. And there was a couple of people at that I was tempted. I was so tempted to sort of, you know. It wasn't that I had stuff on at the same time. It's just if I do something big during the day, I need the replenish time at night. But it was Abby's birthday party. And I was just like, oh, I can't go to that tired. <laughs> I can't go to that like mentally exhausted from being around people all day. I need energy for that. So I chose my daughter's birthday because I'm a good parent. Um, too much sunlight in CSI Miami. Look, I don't know if it's that. I really don't know if it's that. I think it's, the, I, th I honestly think that it's the, how the scripts are delivered. I don't even know if it's the scripts that bother me. Some of those one-liners though, you're right. Those, those David Caruso one-liners are just total trash panda. What else was David Crusoe famous for? Like, obviously he was famous for something because he has his own fan following, but I don't know what it was. Like, people are like, oh my God, David Crusoe is coming to CSI. And you're like, David, who what now? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely be snooping after the live as well. Um, I've got an appointment this afternoon that I have to do, but after that I will sit down and have a squeezy squeeze because I think Tim would appreciate that I think Tim would appreciate a blanket that could cover from his toes up to his shoulders I mean I think we just need to buy him one of those what are they called the the the, the blanket jacket thing slankets no they had a dumb name and they had sleeves and everything and yeah I don't even know if you can still get them Uh, he was in Hudson Hawk. Is that it? That was a movie. That wasn't even a series, wasn't it? I thought it was just a movie.
Um, oh, he was in NYPD Blue. Okay, that was a pretty big series. A lot of people liked NYPD Blue. Was he just as bad in that? I'm just curious. So I'm trying to work out if it's the script or if it's him. <laughs> I once bought tickets to see a band, waited six months only to have my daughter's school presentation night on the same night. <gasps> oh, no. I hate it when schools do that. And they're like, oh, if you, do if you don't love your child, it's fine. You don't need to come. And you're just like, dude, this has been in my calendar for six months. And he sprung that on us like a month before it. Yep. Schools, huh? Grr. Um, I saw Caruso in First Blood. A oh, Fist Blood. First Blood. It was First Blood. Was that First Blood? That makes me think of a Van Damme movie for some reason. What am I thinking of? Um, but yeah, it's frustrating when the thing you want to do clashes with the thing you've really, like you still want to do it, but it's something that comes up later that you're just like, oh man. Do you know what guys? I really need a new chair, but I don't even know what to buy. And the chairs I've seen are like so expensive and I'm like, it's a chair. Do chairs that you need to sit on for hours on end need to be this expensive? Like seriously? Because, like, this chair is fine for most things. Oh, it was a Rambo movie. Oh, she was in the choir. She had to go. Yeah. Frustration station. Similar era of movie is probably what it was. Sly Stallone. Very fun. I don't know if I've watched many Rambo movies. I know I've seen one. I don't know if I've seen any others. I'm just checking my counts here. Um, Game Widows needs a new desk. Yeah, it's tough when you just like, you work on it and you, you need it to be solid, but you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on it. Like, I love this desk that I have, but it's one of those things that if I know now what I knew then, I wouldn't have bought it. Like, it shakes. Because it is a, a standing desk and it's a IKEA standing desk, which I didn't know at the time. It does not matter how well you build the IKEA standing desk. There, there's a, it's just a flaw in the in the design that it shakes. So you know I've got to be careful. Um, not exactly known for being careful. So that's awkward. Um, <laughs> Lisby, I know why I need a chair. I do. I understand. <laughs> I just don't want to spend the money. That's all. I, I want the chair, but I don't want it for like $800. I want the chair for like 300 you know? And I also don't want one that comes up over my shoulders. That's the other thing is finding a chair because I don't like the look, right? I am short, okay? So when those chairs do that, it comes to the top of my head, all right? It doesn't go to neck support. No, 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 no. It goes to the top of my head and I don't like it. And then imagine all the stuff you can't see because my chair is blocking it, right? So I don't want one. Of, so I'm, I'm, And also no arms. I don't want arms on my chair either. Or arms that I can swivel the opposite way because I like to be able to slide sideways out of my chair. Um, but I will confess the chair that I'm currently on <laughs> is like a hundred dollar typist chair from Officeworks, which is a big box office supplier, um, or stationery store that I bought possibly 10 years ago. <laughs> like, why is this chair not comfortable? <clears throat> I don't know. You've been sitting in it for 10 years? There are also secondhand office furniture stores close to where you live where you can go and check it out. I mean, secondhand chairs sounds like it could work depending on the chair and if I can, you know, clean it or sterilize it. <laughs> 
Um, I always had a screwdriver in my hands to remove arms from the chairs. My workers hate me. You know, the biggest thing, like I got this office chair that I actually really like and, and I was building it only to realize that the back was held on by the arms. So I had to have the arms, which annoyed me a lot. Um, Kelly says you have to think about how much time you spend sitting in that chair. Yeah, that expensive chair is worth it, just in my opinion. I Look, and this is the thing. You're probably right. I just don't have $1,000 to spend on a chair. Um, my chair is way awesome. Um, it's not a huge back but does have arms. But made for, yeah. See, I don't like arms. I don't like the arms. Um... Yeah, I hate it where the arms are a structural part of the chair. And that's the thing with this chair, it came with arms too. And I just didn't screw them on. And when I built the chair, and it's fine. Um, I, I am very lucky the chair has lasted this long. It does have different wheels. I do normally change the wheels out. I like rollerblade wheels. So I change the wheels out in my chairs. Um, and I think that makes a big difference as well. That gives your chair like a, an extra lease on life. Because that's usually the thing that dies on my chairs the first is the wheels. Um, and so when you change them out for the rollerblade wheels, it gives them like another few years. Um, Lisby says, just my chair cushion is $1,000. Oh my gosh. But like Lisby, you, you quite literally live in your chair, right? Like yours is a, like I'm thinking of the cushion on your wheelchair. Is that right? Whereas, you know, I probably, if I had, if I had a bit, bit of extra work on, I could probably justify it, honestly, but. I don't have a lot of work on right now. So, oh, those of you that are coming along to retreat, um, keep an eye on your inboxes. There'll be a reminder coming out for your next, um, your next payment to come through. So that I'll, that'll hit in a, in a couple of days um, or so, the email will come out. Um, and then that'll be a couple of weeks before that's due. Um, yeah. So that's just, and then the final payment will come in mid-July-ish, mid to end July. Yeah, it's all airfield and comfy. <laughs> I'm not reading that, but last bit out loud. But yeah, I can imagine that you would need that for sure. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. I probably just like ugh, cringe at the cost of chairs. Um, I've got this, this one friend who has an office and I go there every now and again. And I swear to God. They've just done this office revamp and I, I think it's just so I don't come to visit anymore because the only chairs they have now are the, the actual desk chairs of, of the team members, which that's their chairs, so you don't take those. Um, um, but all the guest chairs are either tub chairs, which I don't fit in, um, or stools, like tall stools that I can't get up on. So I can only go in there long enough that I can stand. So that's disappointing for me. Um, try not to take it as a personal affront because I know it in no way was. But I'm like, oh, yeah, awesome. You got rid of the comfy chair that, that I actually could sit on. That's cool. Um, if I... Did I... It feels like I've shoved that over one. I think I have. Hang on. Oh, yeah, I did. I missed a stitch. Uh... Uh, yes, I love that tip of changing to the wheels. The rollerblade wheels don't gather all the yarn tails and hair. I oh, know, they're awesome. And they're so much easier to clean out if they do happen to gather something. But the, these these wheels on my chair I've had now for, I think these ones have been on here for about, I'd say two years and they don't need to clean yet. Like other than like, a, I just dust them off. When I'm vacuuming, I just give them a little. Um, but they're not like, whereas the, the, the actual chair wheels I was like in there tipping the chair upside down tweezers pulling everything out are we full up numbers wise no we are not full up numbers wise we could accept another couple of people um but I'm also not pushing it hard we've got plenty enough to to run the event so um we could totally take an extra couple if anyone wants to join us um it's 450 for the weekend um that includes your accommodation and food and somewhere amazing to craft for the weekend um and so, yeah, so let me know if you would like to come along. I've got two or three spaces left, I think. 
Um, but in saying that, I'm also, you know, if we have a little bit more room, then that's fine as well. I'm cool. I'm cool with that. Um, yeah, retreat, I'm looking forward to. We've got. I'll have to start talking about, you know, if we're going to run a little... I, I run a little demo. It's not so much a workshop, it's just a little demo because... The retreat is not about things for you to learn. The retreat is space and time for you to finish off the work that you've already got. So, um, and if you happen to learn something new, then awesome. And we normally have um, a really broad bunch of crafters. So if you wanted to learn how to spindle spin, there's probably someone who's coming that can spindle spin. If you wanted to learn how to weave or get better at weaving, there's people that are coming that can weave. You know, like there's there's people with all sorts of skills and you can just sort of buddy up and and chat and yeah so um and while leone up at the gap looks after us and feeds us lots of food um yeah it's a lot of fun i have a really good time at retreat i have a really good time at retreat um i was once at office works a dad talking to his kid about buying an office chair i gave them free ergonomic advice to pick a far better chair than they first looked at that is awesome because, like, you know, you do. You do need some lumbar support. You do need some back support. You do need tush comfort. You need the correct height chair as well. You know, there's just, there, there, there is a lot of things to take on board when you're buying a chair. Um, uh, and Leanne says, and you sure learn off each other by watching and chatting. You do, you do. Like, sometimes, and sometimes you're like, oh, what is that person doing? I've never seen that before. And you just have a conversation. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. And Gamer Widows is coming this year again. And she is bringing some of her amazing little bags and and all her gorgeous, cute things. So, Well, maybe not all of them because she does have to fit them into a suitcase. So, you know, there's that. We're nearly at the end of a row. We are nearly ready for the next thing. Oh, get out of the way, rooster tail. Goodness me. Where is the back loop of that one? I do not know what I did there. Okay, but it's done now. All right, snizzes. Snizzes. Uh, speaking of retreat. Uh, oh, yeah, Nat, sorry. It's still here. I actually haven't. My cricket buried. I've got to unbury the cricket. I've got to unbury the cricket. Because you're not the only one. There's there's you and Sal and Claire that I have to get shirts to. Uh, we'll be doing shirts differently um, than than last year, which is... It'll be a pre-order process and I'll bring the stuff just to iron them onto your shirt. So I won't be bringing the full cricket. Because last year, I forgot the the pad thing. So I had to take everyone's shirts home to work on them that way and get them out. And I did some and didn't do them all. Is that what happened? I can't remember. I can't remember why the stop happened. But now the cricket's buried. I need to unbury the cricket. Okay. Um, it's dice roll, dice roll dice roll time roll the dice to choose the next colour alrighty you guys let's go it's a 7 I thought we were going to get an 8 for a second there I was like it's going to be an 8 but no it's a 7 7 is duckling I like duckling. It's been a little while since we've had duckling. The last duckling is back here. So, but we have had a few ducklings. It's all right. I'm not judging you, duckling. I'm not judging you. Game Widow says, retreat is two weeks after Bendigo, so it'll be with whatever's left. That's fair enough. That is fair enough. So basically, you'll come home. You just start feeling like a human again and then you'll jump on a plane. Is that what you're saying?
that's that's how I after be, I was a mess after Bendigo. Mind you, I had a lot longer drive than what you will have, like from Melbourne to Bendigo versus from Brisbane to Bendigo. Um, I I do miss going though. I miss. Uh, it would not be funny if it's Morpho again, Josephine. We were talking about that at Caffeinated Crafters. Like, what would I have done if we had have had, like, a third purple in a row? Oh, Francis is a row short. She's lost. She lost. Natalie asks a very good question. Have you been tempted to re-roll because you didn't want the colour? Yes. But did I re-roll? No. Um, here, look. Last week we had... We had the purple, the anemone, and then the anemone again. And then, like, you know, we had the green, then the pink, then the green. So there have been times where I'm like, oh, come on. And I'd really like to roll an eight, honestly, just, just for the fun of it. I made some cool stuff for eights, and um, I've not got to use it yet. So, you know, it's, it's – I would like I would like an eight um, because – there's some fun stuff. Oh, it's raining. Oh, Louis. Louis, you're such a gentleman. You're such a gentleman. Let me just see if I can just pan up just a little. There we go. <laughs> um, that rain's bucketing in. I'm just going to duck out and double check my front window is closed because that sounds like if the window is open, it's it will be coming in. I'll be back in a second. You wait here. So we have got a couple of windows on our house that face in a different, like most of the windows are side on windows, but there's a couple that face the front. And with this kind of rain, it's usually those windows that let the water in. So yeah, there's just a couple. Um, but yes, I have been tempted to re-roll. I have not re-rolled. I will not re-roll. <laughs> I will do what the dice tell me to do. I will do whatever that colour is, even if I have to do 15 blues in a row. Short of, short of actually running out of yarn. Then, because I only have one of each of these colours except for the pink. Um, so, if a colour runs out before we get to the end, which will be shocking if that actually happens, because based on the math redo that I did, we probably use approximately half a ball of each colour so there would have to be some serious serious double ups um for that to for that to happen um we are getting some serious double ups i mean <laughs> not gonna lie we are um oh Francis says, looks like my granny square is going to have a random orange on one side. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I think it's awesome, random spread looking fab. Oh, look, I think as well. Uh, I don't think you've missed a roll. Oh, you may. Yeah, you, you, you have missed a roll. It's a duckling. That's right. Um, so, yeah, it's we're on to the duckling colorway. Which I quite like with this pink. I actually think the duckling is 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 much better colour than the rooster. The rooster blends in like tonally. It's too similar to the pink. It blends in. It's like the um the red. It blends in as well. The parrot, and then this pink is also not quite tonally different enough. If I was choosing colours again, I probably would have remembered to take my black and white photo to double check them, and maybe I probably wouldn't have added those colours in. But they're here now so suck it up princess they're not terrible they look fine but they're just tonally a little they don't pop the duckling pops the morpho pops the anemone pops and the amphibian pops um whereas the others are just kind of there you know they're spaces nearly with different colors like i think that would have been fine if i had have used white instead of pink 
or or some sort of neutral instead of pink, they would have totally worked. But because they are tonally similar to the pink, they blend in a bit better. That's my way of saying they're still great colours. They're just not maybe not necessarily for this project. But they're in there now. <laughs> um, okay. They're in there now. Um, and I'm like, I'm so glad we went with the whole eight, um, the eight colors and the eight sided dice. And it kind of just became a thing, right? And then I had to buy dice. And then I found a really cool dice maker. And now I've shared that dice maker with you all. And then I needed a new bag for my dice. And now I have a dice fabric bag. <laughs> like sometimes stuff just happens. It just happens. Um, now I need it to happen with a desk chair, which, you know, is probably not quite so serendipitous. So, yeah. The other catch is I need a desk chair that's not too deep because I've got short legs and I already struggle with my feet reaching the ground most of the time. Like I have a footrest under my chair, uh, under my table, so that I can put my feet up so they don't just dangle. Because chairs only go down so low. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, the dice place. Thank you, Kelly. Natural 20 dice. And they've been lovely to deal with as well. I asked a question about getting... They have a giant um, D20 that they sell. And I asked if they had a giant D8. And they don't. They can only do the D20. Which is such a shame. But maybe next time we can have a colorway that, like a colored dice roll that has more colors. So that we could buy the giant D20. Does that sound awesome? Or is it just me? Um, and you need to find a nail artist and get dice paintings. Dice paint. That would be cool. That would be cool. I'd have to get nails on again. I don't have my nails on at the moment. I've been choosing where to spend my monies and my money has been going to some health things. So I miss my nails. I had a lot of fun choosing fun and colorful things, but I had to choose between exercise physiology appointments which are quite expensive and getting my nails done, which is also quite expensive, but was also like, it was a splurge. It was a splurge for me anyway. So, but I definitely miss all the fun colors and, and the stuff, you know, the designs and everything. Cause that could have been so fun having like a little tumbling dice, like just painted onto a finger. That would look really cool. Um, but yes, we have gone down a bit of a rabbit hole with the whole math rocks thing, haven't we? I know some of you had your own dice already, which I think is just super cool. And I did have some dice, but I wanted prettier dice, okay? That's what it boiled down to. I wanted some prettier dice. And we may get a third row of the pink out of what's left of this ball. So I really thought we'd only get two. So we already got two. Now we're going to push for a third. So that's encouraging. Because we'll work out sort of the basic length of the blanket. Because I only have so many. And, and I'll probably, because we're, we're going to do the same border that we did on the queen. Um, and if we don't have enough of the pink to do it double-sided, I'll do what I did for the queen. I'll use up some of the colors on the back and then the, um, then the pink on the front. So, cause like this looks amazing. The back of it looks just as good as the front, I think. Well, different. They're totally different, but it would totally work as a cute couch blanket the other way as well. So I don't know which way Tim would prefer. It's orange fluff bizarre um so yes it is 
we're nearly at the end of this row. I'm trying to, I'm like, I'm looking at the clock and I'm trying to do a good job and chat. I'm, I'm no, I'm probably not going to roll for the border. Not unless, I mean, it will depend on A, how much of the colors I have left and B, if I even need to do it. So if I have enough of the pink, I'm just going all pink. But if we end up needing to do the border and I've got a choice of colors, I reckon rolling for the border could be fun. Um, but there's only going to be like a couple of rows, like two to three rows. So it might just come down to whichever yarn there's the most of or the least of to use up or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. The queen ended up having quite an interesting border on the back. I only to realize <laughs> that I had another ball of purple. I probably could have done the back with the purple. So, whoops. Things you learn, right? Um, tabletop is too small for her to roll for the border. Oh, very funny. Um, it'll be all right. It'll be fine. I would like a, um, I saw this thing and I nearly, I got sidetracked, you guys. I legit got sidetracked. It was a Lego contraption that you put your dice in and then you press the lever and it levers the dice up to the top and rolls the dice into a little tray in the bottom. And I'm like, I wonder if out of the three crates of Lego that we have here, if I have all of the pieces to make this. Now, the answer is possibly. But the Lego was not sorted. It's just dumped in crates. And it was taking me way too long. Like it took me two hours just to find half of the pieces. And I was just like, I cannot justify any more time. <laughs> I just can't. I just can't. Um... I'm just checking the orders here. Um, but yeah, it was just like, but you could buy like a custom, like, because with Lego, you can buy individual bricks and stuff that you need for things. So there was like this custom pack. You could just click and spend $70 and get all of the pieces sent. But I was just like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Um, Lizby is a champion. Thank you, Lizby. Salisbury's not too far. <laughs> oh my gosh I will have to look it up I will look it up I promise because Tim found me a really cool comfy office chair and we bought it um, but the arms on it just did my head in I couldn't deal with the arms of it and I used it for a while and now he uses it it's over in his spot so it's not going to waste but I also don't have to put up with the arms. I don't like arms on chairs. Okay. Let yourself. Your arm doesn't bend that way properly yet. Okay. Back onto the pink. Do I have a paper measure handy? No. It's out in the lounge room. I used it. I'm just curious as to know how wide we get with a ball go to the warehouse and sit in the chairs yeah i know you can't just buy a chair online i i don't like shopping in real human form <laughs> I don't like going out lizby i'm safe here this is my spot i'm like i don't have to deal with humans oops double check that i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing one two three four five and then in you go Um, so I'll have to have a look. What's it called? Greg's Office Furniture. All right. I'll have to, can someone send that to me, um, to like a, as a, as a, a like a Facebook messenger message or something so that when I, the chat goes, because what happens is the chat will disappear after the live stream for a few hours. It comes back. But when YouTube are processing the videos, you don't always get the live stream chat. Um, so, yeah. Oh, 
I split the yarn. Good job, Chantel. Well done, me. How are you all going with your projects? I know poor Frances has lost her chick has lost yarn chicken. How's everyone else going? Um, oh, Kelly, that's actually an excellent point. Post it in the fun zone so that we can all find it. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea as well. The other thing is, I do have more yarn here that I got from the amazing um, Maker Yarn. And... It is the, the, this is their DK, which, you know, it, lots of people know how I feel about that. Um, but it's the Aran weight. And I think that will make a seriously squishy couch blanket. And we do, we are in need of new couch blankets. I actually have to throw a couple out. They were manky. Also, I don't want to use these ones on the couch. They're too good. They're too good for couch blankets. So, oh, actually, there's one missing. Oh, yeah, I told Tim to come and get a, another blanket because he was complaining. And he was like, I don't even know where they all are. And I'm like, um, they may be props on my YouTube set. Go and grab one. So we are in need of more couch blankets here. Because Abby took the other one. It's in her car. The other one's gone to my dad. So this one's going to stay here. And probably also, maybe... Um, maybe also the Ash and Eve, no, Aaron and Eve, I think it is, Aaron and Eve, worsted, fluffy stuff. Um, the orange didn't work, so I introduced the next color early. Okay, fair enough. Um, Artag is shaping the crown, Chintamani says, knitting, living dangerously, knitting a lace shawl with no lifeline. Oh my gosh, are you using stitch markers? Please tell me you're using stitch markers. Because that's totally on the edge. That's totally on the edge. If there's no lifeline and there's no stitch markers. Oh, look, I'll be honest. I quite often will knit lace without a lifeline. But I always have the stitch markers. Every repeat. Or at least every second repeat. But yeah, stitch markers. Now, in, in the, there's a comment on an old video of mine where I'm talking about stitch markers. And they're asking... If there's a good stitch marker for yarn overs because they lose their yarn overs. And I'm thinking the only way to use lose a yarn over, wouldn't that be to like undo it or not have done it? Because the yarn over wraps around your needle. I could be, I was like sort of trying to read it and I don't know if it was my early morning brain or I'm sort of looking, trying to understand the problem. A hundred million. Good job, Chintamani. Good job. Um, make a store link. Thank you. That's a that's a make a store. Now, I mean, I I did post in a few places the other day this week, and then I realised it was like, oh man, I posted on an Anzac Day, and it was totally unintentional. Um, but if I'm out of stock of the chow goo or the clover that you want because I'm not restocking. So once you have a look, what's there is 40% off and there's still some stuff there. Um, but if I don't have it, use my link, go to Maker because Maker also has Clover and Chow Goo. And um, if you use my link, I actually, I do get a commission. So I don't totally miss out. Um, yeah. So for those of you that worry about that sort of thing, and I know some of you do, I have had the conversation. Um, Maker has given me a, an affiliate link. So that's not just for yarn sales, that's for all sales to her website. So um, that would be that would be helpful as well. If you decide you needed some new chow goo or some new clover, um, you could use my Maker link for that as well. Um, but I've, I've actually just, I ordered one of her bags. Um, because she was saying that, you know, cause I was looking at them and I'm like, they look amazing. Um, and then I was looking at my handbag and it was looking a bit, it's getting a little worn. I love my Doctor Who handbag so much. I've used it for 
everything for the last three, four years to the point where I've had to replace the straps on it because they just wore out. Um, but now the bottom's starting to wear and it's like once that happens, the bag's done. It's toast. Um, Amelia says, thinking about your chair, sometimes if we have a better chair, it will save us on treatments we need. So spending more on a chair can cost us less. You are 100% right. That is 100% right. Less Cairo, less physio, less massages. If you just sit properly in a chair that's designed to for you to sit in properly. <laughs> I'm sure she says, as she's sitting here, like I've just had to think about like, if you guys could see how I'm sitting, it, uh, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> I've just rolled my chair forward a little bit because so, I'm not leaning off the chair quite so hard. <laughs> so, whoops. But yes, you're right. It can. Using ergonomic equipment can save in so many areas. Uh, Chin tell me double counts every repeat. Yeah, me too. I make sure every time because, you know, tinking lace is not my favorite task. It's really just not my favorite task. Um, in fact, a good chair designed for you to sit in with regular postural change breaks is just as good as a sit-stand desk. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I've paid for the sit-stand desk. And it was awesome when I was packing a lot more orders because I would I would use it a lot more. But now I just about don't pull it out of sit mode because I'm not walking in and out. Like I used to, one of the reasons I got it is because I would be packing orders. And Tim's like, you can't live stream standing. And I'm like, two hours crocheting. No, but probably shorter live streams over on the other channel, which are going to start back up soon. Um, they would probably, I could probably do some of those standing. Um, possibly. I mean, I could start them out standing and see what happens. Um, so yeah, that will be, that will be fun. But I also find that like, if I'm going to be showing like a tutorial on how to do something, I prefer to be sitting for it. That's a personal preference. It's probably also what I'm used to. So I probably could adjust to doing that standing up. I probably could adjust. But my knees get sore. Actually, my knees get sore while I'm sitting too, so that can't be an excuse. We're cranking on towards the end. I was beginning to wonder if we were going to make it to a fourth dice roll, but we're going to make it. I'm determined. Even if we finish at 12.05, I'm determined. Who here has a good comfy chair that they're sitting in right now? Just out of curiosity. I know Lisby. Lisby's comfy. Lisby's got a good chair. My couch is comfy. I love my couch. I've got my footstool because so, my feet don't reach the, the, the ground. Um, so I've got my footstool, which I, I need to make a cover for. It's doing my head in. It's a very old footstool and the, the the vinyl has cracked and it's not comfortable under your feet. Leanne's got a good 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 chair. Oh, Game of Widow's zipper order has arrived. Woot woot. Yes, that's awesome. Hoping my new one is comfy. Got a Ventura gaming chair to set up later, so fingers are crossed. Oh, I hope it is awesome, Vampire. I really do. Leanne's chair is comfy. It's just such a hard call, you know, like it might be comfy for the 10 minutes I sit on it or the, you know, the one minute. Oh yeah. Francis says, yep, it's called the lounge. And this is a problem. I, I could be comfy in something for like, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, but I've got to find something I can be comfy in for hours, like hours. Oh. Yarn chicken starting. Well, it's not yarn chicken, but I'm starting to get to the end of this ball. I might bring it over so you guys can see it. 
I mean, I use the term ball loosely, right? <laughs> Artsik says, my chair is reasonably good. My recliner is too big to fit in the house, so I make do. Oh, no. That's frustrating. I'm not the biggest fan of recliners, honestly. I do prefer to sit up or lay down. I don't I don't like to recline. Um, Alison says it's my old lounge with my cat snoozing on the other end. I mean, I got my dog. Lou dog. Lulu. He's very much not listening right now. Did you guys see his ear move and then he refused to move his head? I, 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 I definitely um, felt that. I felt that. I'm not interacting with you right now. Vibe coming from the dog. I think I know what the problem is. I think he would like to go O-U-T. Um, but he wouldn't go before the live stream. So he missed out. And now he's angry at me. That could be it. I'd be happy to do a fun chair finding mission. Fun. I mean, I don't I don't know if I find it that fun. I think I find different things fun. Um <laughs> But I really do want a good chair that's comfy. That doesn't cost the earth. Um Oh, on the bright side out, so Ken sit in his recliner and craft in the fresh air out the back. Oh, there you go. That sounds like a very much suck it up art sag. Kind of funny. Kind of funny. I like that. The clock on my computer is very small. Oh, that's the other thing. The clock in the kitchen, put new batteries in, it's still running slow. I think the clock is just dying. Lisby says I'm an odd person. No, you're just passionate about, the, about ergonomics. That's not odd. That's just what your passion is. It's just different. Um... Is there food involved? No, not moving. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a bit like what's going on right now. I should check his bowl. I didn't give him his breakfast. I'm assuming Tim gave him his breakfast. Look at this. We made it to the end of the third row using the end of the bowl. Then the catch is, do I start the next row knowing there's no way that's enough and then I'll have to have a join in the middle of a row or do I just start the new ball? But in the meantime, we don't need to make that decision right now. We have a different decision. It is dice roll time. It's dice roll, dice roll, dice roll, roll time. time. Roll the dice to choose the next color. It's dice roll. Dice roll. Dice roll. I hit the wrong thing. There we go. Four. Seven, two, four is Galar. Oops, come here, Galar. Oh, Galar is a nice, tidy ball. Excellent. Um, I start. Yeah, I'm thinking I'll start the new ball. I do have it out already. I really thought I was going to need it today, so I did. Um, I did have it ready for us to utilize straight away. This is such a pretty pink. It's nearly like, I think you can tell, it's nearly like a salmon-y pink or like a, it's a pink with a hint of yellow in it. And I like that kind of pink. That's my kind of pink. Lisby wanted a three. Lisby, didn't you get enough threes last week? Honestly, greedy. Um, still no eight. Yep. Hashtag still no eight. I know. Isn't it frustrating? I've got like graphics and and stuff and fun things, buttons I want to click. There's buttons I want to click that I can't click. Ugh. Do you know how hard that is? I want to click the buttons. What will happen is we'll get like three eights in a row or something. I mean, the advantage is now I know that you're definitely not all going to vote for the exact same number because last time round we hadn't gotten a one yet. So I knew that everyone was going to vote for a one except for Lisby, who no matter what will vote three. Um, and so, you know, it was, I thought, okay, well, at least this time round, it'll be an interesting vote to see what happens. And I was actually having a thought to myself, what happens if there's a tie in the voting poll? 
And I don't know what the option will be. If there's a tie in the voting poll, do I just look and go, okay, well, we've used this one heaps more or this one heaps less, or do we actually do some way to, to, you know, break a tie? Maybe week eight will bring out the elusive eight. I mean, if we don't have an eight by week eight, like seriously, Leanne, I'm going to be checking the dice to see if they've got eights. Like, am I just using seven-sided dice and I didn't realize it? Like, actually, now that I've said that, let me just check. No, there's definitely eights. There's definitely eights. <laughs> um, oh, Knits Bing Girl is another three all the way. Okay, well, that's good to know. That's good to know. Um, dice roll to break the tie. Yeah, possibly. We could be like one to four is this color, and you know, oh, you know, five to eight is this color. Lisby has finished the mug cozy. Let's see if it keeps my tea warm. Yeah, bring it. My tea got cold. Isn't it shocking that after two hours of sitting in the direct path of a fan that your tea gets cold in a standard teacup? Um, toss a coin. Oh, yeah, I like that idea too. That's cool. Yeah, because that, that's just a straight one to two. Yeah, we'll do that. If there's a two-sided if there's a two-sided tie... When you guys vote for colours, we'll toss a coin. It means I'll have to go and find a coin because, you know, knowing my luck, you guys will choose. It'll be a coin cost and, and I can't find a, t a coin anywhere. Or at least I need to make it like it's either mine. It's got to be a 20 cent piece or bigger. Um, Lisby said I was gifted some Bendigo Bloom. It's so scratchy. So I thought I'd try to... People love Bendigo Bloom and I remember when I, I bought some, when they very first brought it out and I bought like three of every colour. I was so hopeful for it. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be gorgeous. I'm going to make a pile of stuff out of it. I touched it. I tried to crochet with it. I tried to knit with it and then I de-stashed the lot. I'd worked out of one ball and de-stashed a lot. I was like, I do not like Bloom. I like luxury. Bendigo luxury, Bendigo cotton. They're the only things of Bendigos that I use. I don't use their classic. I don't use any of their fancy blends. Sometimes I use a cotton blend. Like they'd had that elastine cotton blend that I liked. <clears throat> I tag, I love that. I'm trying not to get the song stuck in my head. Toss a coin to your crafter, oh yarny or plenty. Um, Nispin Girl says it washes softer. Look, I, I understand that logic. I really do. But if I'm not going to enjoy working with something, the time it takes to make a blanket, I'm not going to run the risk of it not washing softly. I mean, you're right. I could do a D6 and, and do odds or, odds and evens. Let me see if I've got any D6s in here. Oh, look. D6, D6. D6. There should be one more. Where are you, final D6? Oh, no. It's in the thing. It's in the... That's it. There will only be three. We could roll a D6 and do odds and evens. That could work. So luxury is okay. I thought it was just me that didn't like Bloom. Look, I think I think we are the minority of people that don't like Bloom. I think most people do like Bloom. I don't like it. Um, luxury is great. I love luxury. It's It feels lovely. Um, so, yeah. Luxury and... So luxury and the cotton are my go-to. So Bendigo. Otherwise, I shop elsewhere. Like, yeah, they are looking good, aren't they, Tracy? Now, if you've got a friend, like if you're coming to Ben, if you're coming to Bendigo, if you're coming to retreat, and you have a friend that you would like. Um, to come along let them know that there's still a couple of spots left but they need to get in now um, there'll be no last minute bookings in like we've had in previous years it just creates frazzle for me and frazzle for Leone so if you guys want to get a friend in get them to book in 
um, or, you know, send them your form or, or send, get me to send them a form and we can fit in an extra couple of people. And you can share your room with someone that you know rather than me randomly choosing. Any, me, any, miny, mo No, I don't do that. Actually, I do. I do sometimes. Um, sometimes I, like, can't decide. Like, there's no particular reason why this person can't share with another this other person. Except there's a few people that are like that because most people are awesome. And they're like, you know, they either, if, they're, if they're concerned, they've already raised their concerns. And if they're not concerned, it, it could legit be like, oh, I think these two people will get along well together. Bam, done. I mean... I've had no complaints of my room matchmaking yet, but that could also be that no one's just made a complaint. They, they could still be like, I, I don't want to offend anybody, but I don't want to share my room with, you know, that person. But we do, everyone shares a room. There's no, there's no um private rooms unless, you know, unless there's, there's an additional fee. There's an additional fee. Um, but yeah. Uh, it is. And with our lower numbers, we've got the space. Whereas when we have the higher numbers, there's no option for the private rooms because there's just no rooms to spare. Whereas we've, we're going with the lower numbers now. Like last year we had, I think we had 21, which was the absolute, it was actually more than the maximum. Leone was a bit like, why did you let in extra people? I'm like, I thought it was okay. And she's like, no, it's really not. I'm like, okay, I won't do that again. And then this year she was really adamant that it's not more than 16. So, yeah. And 16 is still a great number. It's still a great number of people. And I think we have 14. So I think there's two spots available. So, yeah, well, maybe two, I think, is what we've got. Um. I'll just sit on an office chair and just pretend I'm not in a wheelchair and sneak my way into a tree. It's it's not even that. It's just that it's there's I don't think there's like a wheelie friendly bathroom. Um there's wheelie friendly rooms. Uh, actually, there is wheelie friendly bathroom. The bottom bathrooms are wheelie friendly. I think. I don't even know. But I know that getting in and out of the the hall is awkward. Even just trying to do it with a trolley is dangerous. So I'd hate to put you in danger. But I am looking for an alternate venue. It will be a different style of retreat because it would be... Um, the venue here it does a lot of the organizing for us like they organize all our meals they do all that sort of thing but to have um a more open fluid retreat in in somewhere not not a hotel but that sort of style of thing where people can choose to book together or book separately but then i have to look into how we'll do meals and how much it'll cost to have our own room where we can leave our staff that sort of thing um So, yeah, there's a lot of a lot that goes into it. And because I like while I love our venue and I love it a lot. Um, it would be nice if there was somewhere closer to the airport. Honestly, it's a it's a it's a hard run, like somewhere that you could easily catch a taxi or somewhere that you could easily um, you know, be near the airport for whatever, you know, probably not too close to the airport. It's. We don't have, a, this is Brisbane. We don't have a lot of accommodation near the airport, whereas in Sydney, there's tons. Um, but yeah, options. I'm, I'm open to options. Um, but the catch comes down to catering and like it would just be a totally different style of event is what it would be. And I just don't know if I, I don't know if I want to give up what we have. But I don't even really have to give up what we have. We could have both. Just run them at different times of the year. Alrighty. We finished that. And we are just going to start the new colour. Although I am tempted. But I will keep this just in case. 
I'll keep all the little bits. Um, no one told me it was after 12. Nope. Oh, there you go. I didn't realize that was up so high. Um, I'm just sitting here blathering, blathering, and no one told me. Um, game winner says, Victoria, I can recommend some places. Um, I will be, like, if, if we do this somewhere else, it will be in some sort of near the airport hotel-ish situation. It's not going to be an off the beaten track where everyone's got to hire cars um, to find it kind of jobby. So I, I don't know what I want to do yet. I'm still in the, I'm still in the brain area. Um, cool and gather at the beach would be so lovely. Some sea air and there's an airport. See, that's a good option. And there's lots of good accommodation options as well. Um, so yeah. Oh, Game Widow says that there are four game humbugs left. So there's four of these bad boys left to go. So, um, Oh, Van Pierce says, we just enjoy your company too much to remind you. Well, I appreciate that. And I said, by the way, it's after 12. Good job. Good job. Well done. Um, so uh, let me just, I've got a, Galara's gone. There we go. And Louis sleeping with his little warthog. See the little green collar on that warthog? That was the collar Louis came home in. That was his little tiny puppy collar. And we had to open it out to fit it on the warthog. <laughs> So, but again, guys, like this week, I'm going to get in. I'll do the row of, of um, Flamingo so that we can be ready to start on the right row for next week. Um, I will get the dice rolls in as, so if you, if you have a look at a replay, there's a pinned comment and there's numbers. If you click those numbers, it'll take you straight to the dice rolls. So you can totally check those out. I'll get those in over the next couple of days. And um, over on Instagram, I try to remember to upload a photo. Last week, I don't know what happened. This week, I'll do better. Um, and then I also update the Ravelry, my Ravelry page. And it's also got all the dice rolls listed as, just as their numbers. Um, so each week, there's like three or four numbers. And that's what goes into that listing. So if you're just getting started or you're interested in getting started and you want to use the same dice rolls, you can. They're over in a, in a list over on Ravelry. So you can go and do that. Or you could start at the start of the live streams and run through the live streams and crochet and watch at the same time, which I would recommend that because, you know, reasons. Um, so I hope you all have a fantastic week. Um, I've got to get off and get some appoint uh, got to get to an appointment. Um, after I'm going to have lunch first and then I'm going to go and have my appointment. Um, and yeah, I hope you all get your craft done, that you win at Yarn Chicken um, and that we will see you all here next week. Be good now. Bye.